to Coffee and a Chat. And today, a few little things fly. It's bloody... I've got the heater going because it's cold. There's still flies around. What's wrong with this world? Global warming. But we're not going to go there. Not today. No, today. I just want to give you an update on the UK situation. Where the Red Baroness... I might have to get the spray out in a moment. Where the Red Baroness Vera of Norberton wherever Norberton is, has called on not just the BMFA, but also the Large Model Association and FPV UK. She's called for an audience with them all, probably to get her little ruler at and whack them on the knuckles. Don't annoy me. But maybe, no, this is probably an engagement with that group, and we'll see what comes of it. Uh, the secret squirrel that I've, information I've heard is that these bodies are going to make a sort of a combined, unified representation. Um, the strength in numbers, I guess. So that's what they plan to do. But again, We've got to remember that the total membership count of these organisations is probably less than 50,000. And these, so this, they represent 50,000 people saying, please, please don't over-regulate and, and, and tax our hobby out of existence. And on the other side of the coin, we've got 66 million Britons who have been watching the media and reading the Daily Mail saying, drones must be banned. So, yeah, I don't know they're going to get... A lot of traction, but hey, all we can do is try. That's all you can do. And hopefully, I wish them luck. I wish them a lot of luck. One little heads up, one little tip for you guys. Now, as far as I'm aware, I have seen no evidence that the CAA or the Ministry of, what is it, the Ministry for Transport or wherever it is in the UK has done any kind of real proper risk analysis for drone use. Certainly not recreational drone use. Where's the risk analysis? You cannot make good rules, good regulations, good policies without knowing what the risks are. The nature of the risks, the magnitude, and mitigation strategies. They've done none of that. They've got no risk analysis. But I tell you who has done a risk analysis. The insurance companies. Insurance companies, their livelihood's on the line. If they get the risk wrong, if they, you know, it's like a gambling thing, isn't it? You know, they're betting that, that you'll pay them more money than they have to pay you. So they've got to make sure they get the, the odds right. So they do the risk analysis. And they've done risk analysis on drone use. And it seems that it's not very risky. It costs less in the UK to insure yourself for third-party liability when flying a drone than it does to insure your car. So I think that says it all. And apparently, uh, the price of drone insurance is falling in the UK. It's getting less. As, we're, as time goes on, insurance companies are not stupid. They can see, well, m there's not a vast amount of property damage. People aren't being severely injured or killed. So the risk is actually less than we thought. So we can lower the prices and be more competitive in the market. And that's what's happening. So the insurance industry, a commercial entity that must be getting its risk analysis absolutely right or they will not survive, they've said drones are safe. Much safer than they initially thought they were because the policy, the premiums are coming down. You need to take this information to Red Baroness Via and let her know that in lieu of no analysis by the government, commercial entities have done an analysis and the outcome is blatantly obvious. Drones are not as dangerous as the media is leading us to believe. Now, something else that I found kind of amusing, well, it, there's a battle going on in Britain. There's a battle, let's be, let's be honest, there's a battle for the zero to 400 foot airspace. There's a battle for manned and unmanned aviation. There's a battle going on between them. We have a little, we've gained a little bit of ground with the audience, with the Baron, with, with the Red Baroness. Um, she, that, that's basically given us a step forward in terms of maintaining and uh, reclaiming the skies. It really is, it's reclaiming the skies for the hobby that's been around for so long. A um, little bit of gains been, gr uh, ground has been gained, but the manned aviation community is fighting back. And, and I, you know, remember I told you about the incident at Gatwick, not the one at Christmas time where there were no drones, but apparently uh, a drone was sighted near Gatwick. This was last week, I think. And uh, airport, aircraft were diverted, two or three flights were diverted because a drone was sighted near Gatwick, but it was way beyond the five mile, five kilometer exclusion zone. So as I said at the time, the drone operator may have been flying completely legally, completely within the regulations, completely safely, but because a pilot thought he saw a drone outside the exclusion zone, aircraft were diverted. What the hell was going on there? And it's happened again in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, I read in the BBC this morning and on a couple of other news sites that uh, a drone was seen near Edinburgh Airport. How near? Well, it was in a place called Polbeth, which is six or seven kilometres from the end, from the, from the closest point of the Edinburgh airport. So it was outside the exclusion zone. So what the hell is wrong with someone flying a drone where they're allowed to fly it 
Why does that result in newspaper stories like this? This is no. This is the media. This is the media. Look for any excuse to rush out there and write bad news stories about drones. It has to stop. It has to stop. I have a plan to deal with that, which I'll talk about in a future video. But seriously, we have to constantly keep this battle up to, to fight this misinformation coming from the media. And here in New Zealand, it looks like drone registration is on the cards. So the, the Director General or whatever he is, the, uh, whatever of CAA in New Zealand, says that the CAA will be recommending drone registration. Even though a lot of the people I've spoken to at lower level within CAA, people who actually have more than half a clue, they agree that registration is pointless. Virtually everyone below the, the you know, the deadwood floats to the top of most of these organisations. And, and once you get below the surface, the people down there, yeah, no point in registering drones. However, you know, the logs and things floating up the top, the Director General of Civil Aviation, I'm not winning any friends, I don't care. He believes that we should follow the rest of the world. We should introduce drone regulation because everybody else is. I mean, really, seriously, is that your best argument? Because everybody else is? No, no. That I thought CAA should be headed up by someone who is, has got imagination, has got vision, is courageous, has insight, and is willing to look at the facts, not just say, oh, let's do what, they do over there. Now, that's not doing your job. That's just, I mean, you don't even need to be, that we don't need somebody. If all the CAA is going to do is follow everybody else, we don't need people managing the CAA. We just basically hand it over to CASA or hand it over to the CAA in the UK. Why do we need our own CAA? If all we're going to do is follow what other countries do, makes no sense. But okay, this is a guy called Steve Moore. He's the head honcho at CAA and his belief is that we should follow in the footsteps of other countries and repeat their mistakes. Anyway, so registration is probably coming to New Zealand. And if it does, this old man's going to jail. Yay, party at jail. Uh, because I ain't registering. And I'm not giving up my hobby. So if you want to lock me up for having fun on a Sunday afternoon in a grassy field in the middle of nowhere, then I'm sure that that's something the media will also love to hear about. And make you guy, make, make the top brass at CIA and the politicians look so damn stupid, won't it? But hey, someone's got to be the martyr. I <laughs> guess it's going to be me. <sighs> so I might do a video up for the government ministers and the deadwood at the top of CIA and just explain to them monosyllabic big pictures you know slow movement diagrams so that's really even they will be able to understand the folly of this registration thing and what they should be doing instead because no one comes and asks no one asks what should what do you think we should be doing they just say this is what we're doing what do you think of it and they don't listen I mean I think the UK knows that very well indeed but enough of this negative drivel that I've been spouting out here. Let, let's look at something positive in the coffee chat just before we close and that is other people's videos. I love to point you to other people's videos that I think are good and there's a guy in the UK called Pat Condell. I think that's how you say his name. Condell? Condell? Anyway, he's done a video called Our Battle for Britain and yeah it's pretty British centric today the, the coffee chat but that's where all the action's happening. Now he's an old guy like myself and he's done a brilliant video discussing the merits of the UK government. Now, it's not related to model flying, but there are a lot of parallels. You know, he, you've got to watch it. If you haven't watched it already, I mean, it's had 290,000 views almost. So I suspect a lot of people watching this will have already seen it. But if you haven't, go and have a look. There's a link in the description of this video. Go and check it out. Um, he is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I think I noticed that with 280 something thousand views, there was a greater than 10% thumbs up ratio, which is really good for a YouTube video. Most YouTube videos, they, they get quite a lot of thumbs up at the beginning, but then as they get more and more views, that figure drops down quite often. It's less than 5%. He's still got over 10% thumbs up. So there's a lot of resonance with what this guy is saying to public sentiment. Brilliant. Even if you're not in the UK, what he says applies, I think, to governments all around the world. And it's such a such an insightful video. So go and have a look, see what you think. And while we're on the subject of videos ridiculing governments. Um, if you live in Australia, you've probably already seen the, the, the Honest Australian Government videos, which are brilliant. A couple of women do these things are uh, absolutely fantastic. Honest honest Government. Uh, I'll put a link to that as well. These are a couple of women. It's highly par it's a huge parody, but the, the really sad thing, I mean, it's horrendously funny, but it's also very sad because what they say is so damn true. It is so damn true in the name of parody. Um, and I can see now why perhaps governments are trying to clamp down on Facebook and YouTube and, and you know, stamp out this freedom of speech that we've enjoyed for so long because it's making them look pretty damn stupid when people basically say, look, the emperor's got no clothes. And that's what they're doing. They're pointing out the, the absolute ridiculousness of the politicians and their attitudes and their ignorance and their... In fact, what was... The, what did um, Pat uh, Condell say? Something... Um, 
something oh, you have to look at it. But there's, there's a wonderful quote I've used in my blog today about that he used, where um, they forget that they are our, that they work for us and they are our masters. It's it's just oh, fantastic. Anyway, go and have a look at it. That's that's going to be good. Anyway, thank you for your time and this this uh, coffee and a chat break. I will now render this video up, and when you wake up in the UK, you can watch it over your cornflakes again. Try and do that every time. But yep, there'll be more from other areas and. Just a little heads up, big video coming from me. I, as I've said, the media is our enemy in this fight to save our skies for model flying. And I think I've come up with a plan. We can recruit the media to become our allies. And if we can do that, if we can get the media on our side, then we change public opinion. Once public opinion changes, then we change the minds of politicians because they just blow in the wind with public opinion. They don't really have a brain of their own. They just do whatever the public says. They'll, they'll just lean, you know, if the public's saying, oh, we like this, then they'll be liking that because they rely on the public for the votes that keep them in power. And once they're in power, all the free tea, coffee, scones, biscuits and airfares that they want. So they will basically, if we can get the public on our side, we'll get the politicians on our side, then we get the regulations more sensible, we're not treated like sex offenders and put on a register and we don't have to be taxed for enjoying ourselves. So there you go. Tell me what you think. Do the comments with you and check those links out. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Lifeblood of the channel. They keep it going. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Why wouldn't you? Thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.